Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He entered the ring. Wearing gold with black trim, he weighed in at an official 134 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, in his 20th professional bout, with an outstanding record of 17 victories against one lone defeat, one draw, 13 of those victories coming by way of KO. Puro Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Ángel Tashiro Fierro. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing black with gold trim, he weighed in at the lightweight limit of 135 pounds. Tonight, atop the Ring City USA canvas, he enters for the 25th time as a pro with an equally outstanding record of 22 victories against only two losses, 18 of those victories coming by way of KO. The former WBA super featherweight champion of the world. Representing Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico, Alberto El Explosivo Machado. Jóvenes, recuerden lo que les dije: voy a descansar todo el tiempo, cuídense, no quiero golpe de ojo esta línea, protéjanse. No, está bien. Que gana el mejor, suerte, vamos arriba. Let's not forget that mouthpiece again. So we're set for tonight's main event. Machado with 18 knockouts. And if you look at his career, he gets you early. 15 of his 18 have come within the first two rounds, including nine first round knockouts. Same goes for Fierro. Of his 13 knockouts, 11 have come within the first two rounds, six being in the first. This is going to be a banger. Here's what I love about this fight. Fierro's best chance to pull the upset, get Machado into a firefight. Yep. Fierro's best chance of getting knocked out, yep. get Machado into a yep. firefight. Yep. We're going to find out what these guys are made of. Yeah, man. Fierro told us a pretty brazen statement. He said, hey, look, Machado's a good fighter, but I wouldn't be surprised if I retired him. Wow. He, he made that statement. I don't know if you heard that, BC, when he said it, but when he said it, I said, I sat back and I said, Woo, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Eats a left that sends him back. But uh, and Alberto coming out accordingly, working behind the jab, working in combination, and not waiting on Angel. And Machado certainly has a lot to prove early about his chin, his durability. In his last three fights, of course, stopped twice in title fights against Andrew Concio. And he was also rocked against Luis Por Poroso, excuse me, and had to come back and this. sort of finish off his opponent in round two. Yeah, what do you think about, like, in those fights, too, in which he got stopped or he got hurt? It were body shots were the ones that hurt him the most. Well, it's one of those things that he's been able to, let's say, explain it away mm -hmm. as a tough weight cut. Now he's moving up to a higher weight class. Mm -hmm. You can explain that away. Yeah. One thing, you know, Fiedo told us is I just think he lacked heart at the end of the day. Those are bold words. Those yeah. aren't my words. Yeah. But again, those are comments that will have to be backed up in this ring. Those are a couple of nice left hooks to the body by Fierro. Good straight left by Machado. That precision. Oh! Right back up. Seven. Eight. Okay, venga. Come arriba. Second time Fierro's been down in his career. I don't think he's exactly hurt. I think that was a flash knockdown. Great punch, great timing, and precision from Alberto Machado. And this is why Machado makes great TV. He's a mm -hmm. gunslinger, win or lose. Mm -hmm. Sharpshooter. I think that's one of the biggest questions for boxing. How long does it take to recover? You never really know. I said I didn't think that Angel Fierro was hurt, but you can see that he is playing very cautious right now. It looked like he was sliding into second base with the pop-up slide. <laughs> And then now this this changes what you do well. You do well by coming forward and taking the fight to somebody, but you just got touched. You don't want to get touched again. End of round one in which Fierro hit the canvas.
15 of his 18 knockouts have come within the first two rounds. Round number two begins. The future of Fierro having success in this fight is certainly to get inside. Machado utilizes that wide stance. He likes to glide into his power shots, and if you give him that room, he's going to fill it with a big shot, as we yep. saw in round one. Yep, and he's a crisp puncher. His punches that land the best are the ones that have the full extension. Being on the end of the shots, that's all he's going to receive, Fierro. Sean, you know, we always talk about the taller fighter, the fighter with the reach, you know, using his jab, but... The shorter fighters can also use their jab effectively, and Fierro's not doing it right now. Yeah, he's not giving uh, he's not giving Machado anything to think about, anything to worry about, not even a feint. I understand the movement, I understand you know playing defense, but give Machado a look, something to to react to. As the shorter man, doesn't he need to double and triple the jab up to work his way in to get into the range that he needs to that, be in? That's what I would do. Um, but I'm, I, I, I'm trained to use my jab. I'm not saying Angel is not, but he's he's trained to come forward and be an, uh, an attacker. And and by him laying back like this, he, he's not able to do what he does well, which is attack. Combination right there, one, two, and then one to the body. Right. Machado appears to have the speed edge early, but one thing to note, historically in Machado's fights, when he does get into trouble, yes, there were the body shots against Concio, but it's the looping right hands from the outside when his guard drops as he exchanges. So, Fierro's gonna have to punch with him. Sean, yeah. we know that's dangerous when you punch with a punch, yeah. but there will be openings. A little bit of like, like Amir Khan. Amir Khan would always get caught in exchanges, and if you can get Alberto Machado to be greedy and, and get comfortable in exchanging, Alberto, excuse me, uh, Fierro, Angel Fierro may be able to catch him. But the, I think the first thing for Fierro is he's got to get back to doing what he does well, which is coming forward and throwing punches just like this, just like this. He landed a straight right hand then through a hook. And, and, and what I love about Alberto Machado, he's smart. He goes body, head, body, head. Excuse me, head, body, head, body. He mixes it up. He's not a head hunter, and he's not just a guy focused on the body to break down a guy. He's using combinations to the head and body. Machado is a devastating body puncher. That fight we mentioned against Perozo, in which Machado was hurt early, he built his way back in with vicious body shots to drop and finish his body. Said that woke me up. Oh, he goes from the right hand. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Second time Fierro's been down in this fight. <laughs> Effects yeah, that yeah, time. yeah. The first, the first knockdown, it didn't look too bad when he got up, when he popped up, but that one did. And his corner was telling him, you know, in between rounds, you gotta move your head more. He's leaving it right there. Good stiff jab by Machado. Fierro's all action, so. Forgive me if I feel he's not worried at this point. I think he, this is kind of the fight that he wants and, and likes. He has tremendous poise, and you can see that. And obviously that comes. He was raised in Tijuana, a boxing hotbed. We know his history with Eric Morales. This is a tough fighter. Yeah. No, 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 no. As a fighter, you have to identify what, what happened. And you got to calculate it very quickly. That right, that right hook is the is what's landing. Keep the left hand up and start to circle the other way. First of all, he's walking into Machado's power, walking into his left hand, and then, and then, and, and then if he circles the other way, he's got to keep his hand up so that he can get around that right hook. Yeah, he keeps going to the right, which is okay. not the thing to do against the south. Okay, okay, vamos. Oh. I think Fierro moved his head a little bit there. Yeah. Sharpshooter, baby. Solar plex shot. And back up to the head. Temple shots with the hooks. 
with ooh, another solar plex shot. We call those the vital spots. And Machado's aiming for him. He knows what he's doing. Mano fuera. Suéltalo. It looks like some of these body shots and these crisp punches have certainly slowed down Fierro. And the body shot, the body one yeah. too. Look at that, the hands have dropped. He's bending over now. Machado smells, smells blood right now. Yeah. You can see that. This new weight class agrees with him. I know he's a three to one favorite here, but he loves the no hard weight cut at lightweight and he's punching very well. Yeah. And again, Fierro keeps moving to his right, which is the worst thing against the southpaw. We, and you know what, Bob, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not even concerned with the movement anymore. But uh, Fierro's not doing anything that he can do well, except right there throwing the overhand right. What he does well is yeah. going forward. Going backwards, he can't win. No, he ate another combination. Machado totally dominating here through the first three rounds, having dropped Fierro in the first two. How this heels trying to figure it out. Box. Right in the center of the ring. We begin round number four. Machado dominating on Steve Smolder's scorecard and everybody else's scorecard outside of the Fierro family, I guess. <laughs> One thing to note, and I don't want to be pessimistic, Machado's dominating here, but when you have an opponent who won't go away, who's showing you he's got a great chin, Machado does have to be careful of dropping those arms when he's got him pinned against the ropes, mm -hmm. thinking he's got an opening for a knockout. You don't want anything wild here to change the momentum of this fight. And, and, and Fierro's liable to do that. He's liable to land one punch and change the whole complexion of this fight. I got a feeling Alberto's going to the body just to open up the head. Hero working his way back in. Mm -hmm. He just missed with a right hand, got him with the left. Don't accept the hold. See this? Don't accept the hold. Or, or don't accept the clinch. Keep working. And that's who he is as a fighter. He's gonna, he's gonna fight. Some body work of his own. Yeah, the corner of Fierro imploring him to not allow yourself to get tied up like that. Fierro, go to the body, go to the body. Sean, is the tide turning or is it just me? It's a little <laughs> pocket of energy here from Fierro. The tide has certainly changed. Okay, break, pass over. Another thing for Fierro, you see when he throws a punch, he goes that way, so he gets his head off the line for the big punches that he was getting hit with Boy, in the first two rounds. Fierro's attack of the body of Machado in this round is paying dividends. It's hard. I'm a short fighter. It's hard to stay down. It's hard to bend down and stay down there. But when you can do it and do it effectively, you get a guy reaching, missing, and it opens you, it opens up shots. Fierro used his head movement to get inside. Was he busy enough? Nice right uppercut from Fierro. And Followed it up with a right and a left. There's another right hand of the body. Fierro has done tremendous body work here in round number four to slow down Machado. There's another right hand of the body. Big raise. Whoa. Big shot. Combination in the head. What a round for Fierro. I look on the They did it again. <laughs> <laughs> round number five underway. Scheduled for ten. Angel Fierro of Mexico in the gold trunks down in round one, down in round two. Got hurt in round three, didn't go down, but turned things around in round four.
lunging right hand. Then he throws two to the body. Fierro has found a new gear, a new level of confidence, and really more power than we've seen up to this point in this fight. And I, I had to look at my paper and make sure that Angel Fierro's from Mexico. It sounds like a me Mexican crowd out here. This is amazing. But this is he oh, left hand to the head. He's then he that excited. The body. He's that excited. If you punch with Machado, you can find openings, but you got to be bold enough. You got to be ready to take that counter fire. That right hand missed. A little short jab by Machado. Again, it's Fierro concentrating on the body and then leading to the big shots to the head. Uh, BC, I'm going to ask you, what changed for Machado? What changed? You know, he went into finisher mode. He had such a lead built up. He was thinking knockout. He's got to rebuild with the jab and think about boxing again. Yeah. It's interesting because in the first two rounds, Machado used the jab and controlled the distance. You mentioned with the straighter punches. And then all of a sudden, in round four, Fierro found some work inside, and Machado almost kind of sitting back now. Yeah. You know, Sean, I didn't want to make this comparison because I don't want to jinx Machado, but he reminds me a little bit too much of former Puerto Rican champion Juan Manuel Lopez. He can get you out of there from the southpaw stance, but if you can get him into a fight, he's vulnerable. And what did Fierro tell us? My favorite Mexico-Puerto Rican yeah, fight, yeah. Salido versus yeah. Lopez. One said. and two when Salido came to the island and stopped the Puerto Rican favorite twice. Yep. And, and we're seeing it right now. We're seeing Alberto Machado abandon the jab. You, you see him flicking it. There's a difference between flicking a punch and throwing a punch with intentions to hurt, intentions to control a guy. Machado has no control over Fierro the way he did in the first three rounds of this fight. Good combination there by Machado. Can he steal round five after Fierro did most of the work? Straight right hand by Fierro. And then a left to end the round. It's always going to win. Book. Round number six begins in the scheduled 10 rounder. Angel Fierro taking this fight on short notice. Dropped in each of the first two rounds, has battled back and changed the momentum and flow of this fight. Can he keep it up? This is what you do to keep Fierro off of you. You punch, combinations, speed. Don't allow him to pick up his timing. I'm looking around because where I'm from, there will be some fights at some point because of this, this what just happened. This is amazing. 47 seconds. Thank you. Angel Fierro was dropped in the first round, dropped in the second round, lost the third round, and then turned things around in round four as he started attacking the body of Alberto Machado. Did it again in round five, and here's how he ended it. Hook to the body and then right up to the head. Pulling out, circling to his right, but with his hand down. 
The right hand goes down. Once it goes down, never gets back up. And he never saw that left hand. Never saw it. I don't mean to so shillingly stay on brand, but anyone, anytime, anywhere, even yeah. on six days come notice, on, man. they come to fight on Ring City. We are at, in the right place right now. We are in Puerto Rico doing it with Ring City. This is amazing. And as expected, all three judges had it 48-45, which is what Aaron Steve Spoger had it. I had it the same way with the two knockdowns, but it's irrelevant. What did Fierro tell us the best judges were, Bob? You remember that? Best judge is a knockout when you're fighting in somebody else's hometown. He and said that. Boom. He said that, and I said, oh, you're right. <laughs> And where does this leave the former 130-pound champion, Alberto Machado, who has now lost three of his last four and been stopped in those three? For the official time of the stoppage, let's send it up to Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, here at El Albergue Olimpico Salinas, Puerto Rico, we add one more chapter to the rivalry, Mexico-Puerto Rico. This bout comes to an end with an official time of 47 seconds of round number six. Your winner by way of knockout. And now WBO, NABO, lightweight champion, Puro Tijuana. Aunque Tashiro Fierro. See the judges' scorecards, which was what our own Steve Spoger had it as well, because there were two point rounds in rounds one and two, and we all thought Machado won the third round. And then it was Fierro attacking the body, Sean, and I think his ability to put pressure on Machado and start banging away at the body opened up a lot of doors for him. Yeah, I think he just he Machado didn't understand what was going on. He thought that uh, that Angel was hurt and it, and it was not that way. 